Christmas disappear And just pretend it never saw me Every year I get my hopes up that it will somehow just leave But every year I wait to find that once again it now is Christmas You are listening to Grammy's Rocket Chair on RLM Radio. The girl of your dreams has got to be in some bar. Sorry, boys and girls, but this is X-rated. So if you're under 18... Get out! Get the point good. And now, Fendover. Y'all ready for this? We do it all night long. And now, your host, Grammy. Yeah, buddy, here I am, and it is a wacka 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 doodle Wednesday here on the RLM, and you got Grammy Mary here in my rocket chair, and I'm not even really fueled up. It's been one of those weeks, (laughs) and I am, yeah, I'm really ready for next year already. I really am. Hoi. Uh, the end of the year is always madness, but oh well, it's nothing unusual for me. I'm used to having the madness. I don't suffer from insanity. I enjoy it immensely. <laughs> oh well, thank y'all for joining me. Hey, I see you lovely Mary B. By golly woman, it's been a while since you've been here. I just shared this uh, from Twitter and gotta gotta read this. There is one religion more dangerous than any other. It's been responsible for more murder and suffering than all others combined. Its followers blindly accept its rhetoric without question while allowing themselves to be enslaved by its policies. This religion's worshipers are so inured that they have accepted its rules as laws and will obey them even to their own detriment. This religion is called statism. Booyah. Thank you, Truther Monkey, for sharing that over there on Twitter. By the way, I lost a stalker. I must be a really, really fast corner turner. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that is true. Yeah. Mm. Uh, statement of individual freedom. Let me check this shit out. Mm -hmm. I have so many links that, I mean, just in like the last five, ten minutes, I have run across and, and decided to open up. Oh, go away, you dumb thing. Ah, yes, the Grimmy. Yes, I will read that here in just a moment, but I need to say hey there, hi there, hello there to everybody. Let's see, over on Twitter, hey Twitter, how you doing? I lost a stalker, but that's okay, because, you know, I turn corners kind of fast sometimes, and every once in a while, I get up on just two wheels. (laughs) It's kind of fun. Mm, Don't do that too often anymore. In any case, um, so I'm going to go ahead and probably close out Twitter, because, yeah, they keep showing pictures of Trumple Stillskin, and I just plain can't go there. Ick. Um, over here in the corner pocket, hey, Kozu, I see you beat me to the duck. Damn it. Damn it. There's all kind of other people logged in over here, but ain't none of them really conversing right now. But hey, how you doing? Hope you're having an absolutely wonderful wacka 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 doodle Wednesday over here on this Effin site. Yes, Vinny, I see. And also, Cowboy Tech, yay for the mistrial declared on the Bundy trial, although I wish they would have um, dismissed it with prejudice because then the the government wouldn't be able to come back on them. With them just declaring it a mistrial, yeah, they're probably going to do another play on that one, assholios. But, you know, it is a step, step in the positive direction, so there you go. I also see Grimmy is over here. Thank you for sharing me, Grimmy, and thank you, Barman, for tweeting me out over there on Twitterville. I truly do appreciate you guys doing that. I don't know how many people I'm scaring tonight, but I'm sure I'm going to scare some. 
Hmm, because I am going to get to what is Christmas. Because, yeah, it's not necessarily what everybody was told it was. Now it's more of a commercial thing. You know, what is Christmas? Well, Christmas is... <laughs> Yeah, it's an excuse to tolerate snow <laughs> and try to overdraw your bank account and all kind of other fun shit. Hey, you could run for Congress if you did that. Okay, over here on Fakie Book. I really don't see anybody over here on Fakie Book either, but they are chitty chatting an awful lot over here. So, hi, how you doing? Let's see. People are getting really. And I keep seeing this shit going around on Fakie Book about there are only, you know, like 25 people seeing your feed or whatever the hell. Hey, that's more than nobody looking at it. Quit your bitching. What are you paying for it? If you're not paying anything in, like physically, tangibly, having to pay a subscription, then shut up. Sorry. I used to do that and yeah. <laughs> Some of the biggest bitchers were the ones that went, oh, but I can't afford to pay. Yeah. So, yeah, go ahead, bitch. I don't care. Over here on Mines. Hey there, hi there, ho there, everybody over here on Mines. I hope you're having a splendid first day. I don't know. I think I forgot to post it over here on Mines. But I tell you what, how about I do that right now? I'll just do a real quick copy and paste and say, yo, come play. You might learn something. Like, this woman's insane. <laughs> That's okay. Up, 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 up. Dang! I have got stutter fingers. Okay, there we go. I do like that Minds page. It's interesting. I, and Although it never fails, when I open it up at work, there's somebody's bare ass or boobs. It never freaking fails. It's like, come on, people. Really? <laughs> During the work day? Holy moly. Okay. Uh, let's see. Facebook, Freedom, Corner Pocket, Minds, Twitter. Now, to the place where you need to be if you want to give me static. Yeah. <laughs> you need to be over here on the RLM because, yeah, this is the one that I pretty much pay attention to. I have gotten a few comments over on the Spreaker site um, when, you know, my broadcast while well, live. And it's like, oh, sweetie, man, I wish I would have seen this while I was live. But then again, it's like, I have enough trouble dealing with what I'm dealing with. <laughs> I, I need an able-bodied assistant to go, yo, Grammy, someone's talking to you over there. But, you know, I don't need one bad enough to, like, ask for one, really. <laughs> oh, well, over here on this effing site, or not effing site, yeah, the effing site, I've been there already. Over here on the RLM, right up top, we got Barman, who is the most splendiferous bot in the whole wide world. Just gotta say that. Thank you ever so much, Barman. You've been an awesome Barman all year long. And I'm going to really have to kind of ponder on, because I think the New Year's show is coming up on the Freakers next week, isn't it? And I'm going to have to come up with some really good predictions. Or at least one really wackadoodly one. I also see Grimner is here. Who is the RLM god, don't you know? And the lovely Moose Girl, who is now even more sexyified, because now she's got a sexy car to drive. They go, Moosey. I hope you enjoy it. I hope you have a wonderful time, and I hope it does very well for you. They're, they're good vehicles, from what everything that I understand. The lovely Kate is here. Hey there, Kate. How you doing, sweetie? I also see Asmo is logged in. Hey, Asmo. And hey, the lovely Beth Z, closely followed by Chalcedoni. Did you know Chalcedoni's following you, Beth? Look behind you. Be careful. I also see the lovely Chloe is here. I had to do the extra E's. And Free Enslaved. Hi, Free Enslaved. How's things way down in Florida? I hope it's nice and warm. I, I hear that you had some inclement weather down there. Rain, at least. I also see I'm here, kind of, sort of, physically. <laughs> we ain't swearing by anything else. And I be Don C is in the house. Hey, Don. 
I see you. Java, 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 Java Doctor 2 is in the house, as well as JJ's. No, 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 JJ's. Juana Taco. Mmm, sounds lovely, but you know what? I got beans cooking on the stove. Yes, I am making rocket fuel for Friday. Because I started them soaking last night. And yeah, I'm going to be making chili with these bad boys. I also see Meister Brower is in the house. Hey, Meister Brower, how are you doing? And P. Bunyan, Timber. And looky there, the lovely rain is in the house. Uh, Grammy will continue to be, yes, I will be. <laughs> That's a tough prediction there, Grimmy. <laughs> Did I get it? Damn it! Grimmy! Shit! <laughs> I was too busy laughing and wasn't paying attention. Oh, well. Grimmy's having duck soup. Hmm. Okay. Uh, RLM Fluke is in the house. The Vanna White of the RLM, don't you know? And the one that dispenses the flap, flap, flaps. And Grimmy beat me to it. Rob Works is in the house. Hey, Rob Works, where's the bubbler? Did I miss it? Did I miss it? Did it go by me and I didn't even get a whiff? Shit. I hate when that happens. Um, da -da 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 -da. Trust no one is here. Hey there, Rome's. How you doing? I really miss being able to go, Darth Rome's. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, seeing as how you're not being very trusty, that's okay. Colfax 101 is logged in. I know who that is. I also see Dakota, as well as Dima and Flash Nasty. Frumpy is here. Hey, Frumpy. How you doing, hon? And Gooberzilla. Goober, honey. I don't know. I've been listening to some Flat Earth videos lately. And, um, yeah, I don't think you're going to get to go to outer space. But you might be able to go to one of them uh, um, other... Uh, bubbles on the icy plain. <laughs> oh, and yeah, I think Trumbull Stillskin will continue to melt lots of things, but not women's hearts. Let's just put that out there, okay? He don't do nothing for me. Mm. Mm. Girls gotta have her standards. Okay, did I say Flash Nasty? Yeah, I did. And Gooberzilla. And Kozu, who beat me to the duck over in the corner pocket. Dang it, you Kozu. I'm gonna have to find me a kazoo just to get you. The lovely Miri B has joined us from down under. Long time no see, dear lady. It's so wonderful to see you're back again. And Mmm Bot is here. Mmm, that always sounds fun. <laughs> Bitcoin will save us. Yes, let's have a cryptocurrency that's at least admitting it's cryptocurrency as compared to the other shit that's, you know, it's it's digital. It's just that, well, you know, you can also have tangible. That's the only difference to me. I mean, they're both digits on a screen. That's pretty much all it is anymore. It woiks in this society, but, you know, there's a lot of people that do silly things that aren't necessarily factual. Oh, well. Moy, 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 moy is here. Hey, moy, how are you? I also see the lovely Motley Alaskan is here. And Boxified is logged in, but away, as well as pop a -pon sauce. And looky there, Sock Puppet. I see you, Sock. I saw you chatting earlier, but I was busy at work. That damn got dandruff some of it itches the uh, phones kept ringing today holy crap you know when you're trying to get something else done that's when the phones go absolutely nuts um let's see oh thank you rob works for firing up the bubbler how awesome puff puff pass i also see slim jim flim is logged in hey slim jim as well as teddy hi teddy how are you are you feeling particularly cuddly today and to round out the crew the one the only the phantom the creator of my intro by the way not the trans-siberian orchestra song that you know asks what is christmas it's the grinch song for those of you that don't know or that's another way of searching it, is to say it's the Grinch song. Um, let's see, a killer robot out there. Better yet, have your house and car... Oh, hey, that would be cool. Okay, 
Um, da -da -da -da. okay, I'm going to go to this right off the bat. I'm just going to go, um, da -da. okay, so which one do I want to go to? Um, do I want to go to the true origins of Christmas or why is Christmas celebrated on, I just did a duck, duck, go search. Um, the first recorded Christmas was December 25th of 336. Emperor Constantine did that one. He inflicted that upon us. Uh, let's see, where do I want to go? Yeah, let's go to life science because it's got pagan roots and five surprising facts about Christmas. So let's go there, shall we? This one was posted December 22nd of 2012, by the way. I'm sure there are a lot more current ones, but this one, this is the one that really grabbed my eye. And hey, it's got a video and do not auto start. Stop it. Um, so, when you gather around the Christmas tree or stuff goodies into a stocking, you're taking part in traditions that stretch back thousands of years long before Christianity entered the mix, which by the way, just to let you know, pagan is basically any religion that um, is not the predominant one at the time. That's pretty much the definition of pagan religion. So, stop it. Um, pagan or non-Christian traditions show up in this beloved winter holiday, a consequence of early church leaders melding Jesus' nativity celebration with pre-existing midwinter festivals. Why? Because they thought that this would be a wonderful way to convert people, you know, so that they didn't have to kill them all because they needed people to do the work, don't you know? Since then, Christmas traditions have warped over time, arriving at their current state a little more than a century ago. So, number one, early Christians had a soft spot for pagans. It's a mistake to say that our modern Christian traditions come directly from pre-Christian paganism, said Ronald Hutton, who is a historian at Bristol University in the United Kingdom. However, he said, you'd be equally wrong to believe that Christmas is a modern phenomenon. As Christians spread their religion into Europe in the first centuries AD, they ran into people living by a variety of local and regional religious creeds. Christian missionaries lumped all of these people together under the umbrella term pagan. This is from Philip Shaw, who researches early Germanic languages and Old English at uh, Leicester, or Leicester University in the UK. The term is related to the Latin word meaning field. And uh, the lingual link makes sense, he said, because early European Christian uh, Christianity was an urban phenomenon while paganism persisted longer in the rustic areas. Well, because they didn't have them big fancy schmancy churches, they didn't really think they needed them because, you know, they just kind of went out into nature and went, wow, thanks, this is really awesome. You know, that's the church I go to. Oh, well. Early Christians wanted to convert pagans. Convert or die was a lot of it. <laughs> but they also were fascinated by their traditions. Yes, dear. Who's yakking at me? Oh, there's some dork using one. Really? There's a dork using. Hmm. There you go, Grimmy. Okay. Tooty dooty waddy. Oh. <laughs> now I see. Okay. Never mind. Okay, back to my article. So, Christians of that period were quite interested in paganism. According to Shaw, it's obviously something they think is a bad thing, but it's also something they think is worth remembering. It's what their ancestors did. Perhaps that's why pagan traditions remained as Christianity took hold. 
The Christmas tree is a 17th century German invention, um, but it clearly derives from the pagan practice of bringing greenery indoors to decorate in midwinter. The, the modern Santa Claus is a direct descendant of England's Father Christmas, who was not originally a gift giver. However, Father Christmas and his other European variations are modern incarnations of old pagan ideas whose spirits, um, about spirits who traveled the sky in midwinter. This was according to Hutton. But I also read something not too long ago um, that uh, there was a uh, Nicholas in old Rome that um, gave, I think it was 20 gold pieces to some poor people and that was supposed to be the beginning of St. Nicholas so I don't remember where I read that but I did I do remember reading something about that the other day <clears throat> number two we all want that warm Christmas glow although we don't want it to be you know from nuclear kind of shit okay we don't want to glow orange or green by the way this fixation on partying in midwinter According to historians, it's a natural time for a feast. It's an agricultural society. The harvest work is done for the year, and there's nothing left to be done in the fields. It's a time when you have some time to devote to your religious life, said Shaw. But it's also a period when, frankly, everyone needs cheering up. Yeah. Because the dark days that culminate with the shortest day of the year, the winter solstice, could be lightened with feasts and decorations. If you happen to live in a region in which midwinter brings striking darkness and cold and hunger, then the urge to have a celebration at the very heart of it, to avoid going mad or falling into a deep depression, is very, very strong. And yeah, I'm getting really tired of the sun going down shortly after 5 p.m. It's like, really? Come on. Because then I want to go to bed at like 8 o'clock. I'm used to the summertime where the sun goes down around 9. <laughs> and uh, then I'm ready to go to bed around midnight. But when, it goes, when the sun goes to bed between 5 and 5.30, it's like, I'm ready to go to bed at 8.30, 9 o'clock. <laughs> It's something about my internal clock, apparently. Oh, well. Uh, even now, solstice means not, um, not all that much because you can get rid of the darkness with the flick of an electric switch. Even now, it's a very powerful season. This is according to Stephen Nessenbaum, who is the author of a Pulitzer Prize uh, finalist, The Battle of Christmas. Hmm. Number three, the church was slow to embrace Christmas till it saw how it could really rake it in from Christmas. Despite the spread of Christianity, midwinter festivals did not become Christmas for hundreds of years. The Bible gives no reference to when Jesus was born, which wasn't a problem for the early Christians. It never occurred to them that they needed to celebrate his birthday. With no biblical um, directive to do so and no mention in the Bibles of the correct date, it wasn't until the 4th century that church leaders in Rome embraced the holiday. At this time, Nessenbaum says, many people had turned to a belief the church found heretical, that Jesus had never existed as a man, but as a sort of spiritual entity. Well, you can't have people believe in that because then the church can't say, oh, but you must be saved through Jesus and through his teachings. And how can you have his teachings if you don't have a physical teacher right there? And they embody that physical teacher. And then you're supposed to do as they say. Hence the power trip and the job security that goes along with it. Yeah. Yeah. If you want to show that Jesus was a real human being, just like every other human being, not just somebody who appeared like a hologram, then what better way to think of him being born in a normal, humble, human way than to celebrate his birth? This is according to Nussenbaum. 
midwinter festivals with their pagan roots were already widely celebrated, and the date had a pleasing philosophical fit, with festivals celebrating the lengthening days after the solstice, which fell on the 21st of December that year, or the year this was born, or this was written. Oh, how wonderfully acted Providence, that on that day on which that son was born, Christ should be born, one Cyprian text read. Aha! Uh -huh. So, it's not S-O-N, it's S-U-N. A lot of people, man, when you say that, there's a lot of people get just a little bit butt hurt over that. Them's fighting words. <laughs> Number four, the Puritans hated the holiday. But if the Catholic Church gradually became to embrace Christmas, the Protestant Reformation gave the holiday a good knock on the chin. In the 16th century, Christmas became a casualty of this church schism, with reformist-minded Protestants considering it little better than paganism. This likely had something to do with the raucous, rowdy, and sometimes body fashion in which Christmas was celebrated. Oh, really now? Hmm. In England, under Oliver Cromwell, Christmas and other saints' days were banned. And in New England, it was illegal to celebrate Christmas for about 25 years in the 1600s. Okay. I obviously... <clears throat> did not click to shut up one of my things because I just heard a ding. Okay. Um, da -da 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 -da. So forget people saying happy holidays instead of Merry Christmas, he said. Aha. Uh -huh. If you want to look at the real war on Christmas, you've got to look at the Puritans because they banned it. And finally, number five. Gifts are a new and surprisingly controversial tradition. While gift giving may seem inextricably tied to Christmas, it used to be that people looked forward to opening president presents on New Year's Day. Ah! They were a blessing for people to make them feel good as the year ends, Hutton said. It wasn't until the Victorian era of the 1800s that gift gifting giving blah 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 blah. blah. Yeah, it is a wackadoodle day because my tongue just flat assed is refusing to cooperate. The gift giving shifted to Christmas. According to the royal collection, Queen Victoria's children got Christmas gifts in 1850, including a sword and armor because, you know, them, their royals, they had this way about them. <laughs> <laughs> in 1841, Victoria gave her husband Prince Albert. Where's Prince Albert? He's in the can. <laughs> okay. I know. I am getting dingy. The dang, the dang, the dingy. Um, <clears throat> she gave Prince Albert a miniature portrait of her as a seven-year-old. In 1859, she gave him a book of poetry by Alfred Lord Tennyson. Well, how sweet. All of this gift-giving, along with the secular embrace of Christmas, now has some religious groups steamed, Nassenbaum said. The consumerism of Christmas shopping seems, to some, to contradict the religious goal of celebrating Jesus Christ's birth. In some ways, Nissenbaum said, excessive spending is the modern equivalent of the revelry and drunkenness that made the Puritans frown. So there's always been a push and pull, and it takes different forms, he said. It might have been alcohol then, and now it's these glittery toys. You know, I think it needs to be, Christmas needs to be very green. That's what I think. And I saw, and I shared it, and I had someone tell me that they would come dispose of my Christmas tree once I am done with it, after it's dried out. Uh, someone took a really, really, really big green herbal plant <laughs> and hung ornaments on it. It was their Christmas tree. And I thought, oh, that's so pretty. 
Internal screams? What? Chumbawamba. Cool. I actually remember who Chumbawamba is. Whose who's fingers where? I don't want to know. Don't answer that. <sighs> okay. I'm going to go ahead and share this over on the effing side as well. Did I, did I hit enter? Yeah, I did. Okay. <laughs> Whoa. Brain farts are us. But that's okay, because I got beans going on the stove. <laughs> so it won't just be brain farts after those get done. Oh. Okay, let's see. Yeah, we'll do this one. Okay. Yes, I see a flasher flasher. Oh. Poxified is hiding, huh? <laughs> oh, now I remember one. Uh, well, I don't remember the name of the song, but I do remember that there was one Chumba Wumba song that I like. Yes, Poxified, you should tune in, honey, because I'm on here. It's like the sultry tones of Grammy. <laughs> oh, pay no attention to the crazy woman. Okay. Um, now, seeing as how I did that one, let's go over here to this one from Fellowship of the minds, shall we? Because in a time of universal deceit, telling the truth is a revolutionary act. I'm going to have to uh, save this page. Hmm. Did you know that the Vatican's nativity scene is too sexually provocative even for fakie book? <laughs> that's really not hard to do. Somebody probably said it was, but you know, it's really not that hard to do because people get butt hurt real easy over on Facebook. Apparently, the Catholic Church today makes traditional believers despair. In a video for a pro abortion and pro LGBT website, mick.com, the dean of the Jesuit School of Theology at California's Santa Clara University. Father Kevin O'Brien dismisses the notion that there is a war on Christmas. Okay, apparently he says, I don't think Jesus would care much about whether we say Merry Christmas or not. It should not be about a litmus, litmus tests, about whether I say Happy Holidays or Merry Christmas. To me, that's an easy way to prove your Christianity. Okay, hmm. I say happy holidays all the time. And I do not identify as a Christianityist. <laughs> we have to be careful about the language you, you, we use in this pluralistic society like ourselves. Because in it, we encounter people of different faith traditions to whom we should listen and respect. Okay, I get that part. Yes, we should listen and we should respect. And yet... And yet, we should not be afraid to express ourselves in a manner that we are comfortable with as well. And they, it's not just that we should be listening and be respectful, but others should be as well. Just kind of throwing that out there. Apparently, a fish rots from the head down. Really? I didn't know that. More distressing than a Jesuit theology school dean airily dismissing the reality of a war on Christmas is the nativity scene at the Vatican, which is deemed too sexually provocative even for fakie book. Okay, there's a naked guy there. But you really can't see nothing in the picture. Damn it. <laughs> Notice anything about the Vatican uh, exhibit that isn't found in traditional nativity scenes? Yeah, the naked guy standing over to the side. <clears throat> Apparently, there's a close-up of what face Facebook deemed was too sexually provocative. It's a naked man supposedly being offered clothing by a charitable 
pilgrim. Okay, and the cloth is over the private parts, so therefore there are no dangly bits hanging out for all the world to see. So what the hell? Oh yeah, the nipples are showing. That's right. And nipples instantly piss people off for some reason. I see a nipple. Oh my god. Poor babies. Apparently Facebook rejected <clears throat> Excuse me, rejected an ad featuring the image of the nativity scene with the following justification. Your ad can't include images that are sexually suggestive or provocative. We just can't have that. But apparently, Pope Francis says the manger scene, the work of Antonio Cantone, is a depiction of the corporal works of mercy. Those of feeding the hungry, visiting the sick, and imprisoned, burying the dead, and clothing the naked, which is where naked guy comes in. But he's not naked. He's, he's got cloth over the dangly bits, so he's not really naked. This year's nativity scene, executed in the typical style of Napoleon, uh, Napoleon, uh, Neapolitan art, good lord, is inspired by the works of mercy. They remind us that the Lord has told us, whatever you wish men to do to you, you also do to them. Oh, no, 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 no. Oh, no, I would much rather say it. Whatever you don't want done to you, don't do that to the other guy. The crib <clears throat> is the suggestive place where we contemplate Jesus, who, taking upon himself the miseries of man, invites us to do likewise through acts of mercy. Blah, 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 blah. Okay. <clears throat> I really don't want to take on the miseries of man. I would much rather uplift than take on miseries. Because you know what? When you take on the miseries of another one and it doesn't alleviate their miseries, then you got two people miserable instead of one. <clears throat> so instead of taking on their miseries, how about you share a little bit of your happiness and your joy? And hey, maybe you'll have two happy people. And that will make more of a happiness quotient as opposed to a misery quotient. And I much prefer a happy quotient. Apparently, many on social media are not fooled by the works of mercy. They noted the vague or not so vague homoeroticism of the naked guy's languid pose. Really? Okay, I'm looking at this and that, that part never... Oh, shit, his mouth is open. Oh, my God, that's that homoeroticism right there. Are you guys looking entirely too much for this shit? Apparently, they pointed out that the naked guy is more prominent than what should be the focus of the nativity scene, the baby Jesus. I don't know. I'm not, I'm, I'm not getting it. Apparently, <clears throat> this writer is uh, hard-pressed to find baby Jesus in the scene, which, okay, uh, yeah, well, you got Mary sitting there, and you got, hmm, someone's holding, I don't know. <laughs> I'll let you look for it. Hmm, hmm, ice cream? Ice cream, you scream, we all scream for ice cream. Close on, close off. Well, you know, if you have your, take your clothes off and there's a bow on, it's like, Merry Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> okay, moving along. Oh, yeah, leave it to me to make a nativity scene not. Well, you know, I they started it. When they said it was homoeroticus or some such nonsense. What the hell? Uh, you know, sometimes people just really amaze me how they, how they can see the damnedest things and stuff. And I just kind of go, what? You're going to have to point this shit out to me because I'm obviously just totally clueless here. Hi. I'm really surprised that the Vatican didn't apologize because, you know, the apologists are probably faunching at the bit. Somebody's going to have to apologize because I got an emotional boo-boo. Huh. 
Okay. Let's see. Dun 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 da da da. Hmm. <laughs> yes. Hello, Mark. I see you. Okay. Where else do I want to go? You know, that's pretty much, that's all the Christmas shit I got. <laughs> I'm sure I'll find more Christmas stuff, but I'll probably save those for Friday. Because, yeah, I will be here Friday, too, the Friday before Christmas. So, yeah, I can do this. I can do it. So, let's go to something a little bit more current, a little bit more good for you. Like from the green flower. LearnGreenFlower.com Six ways to heal your lungs after smoking. Now this is from June of this year. So it's a few months old, but hey, what the heck. Smoking is still one of the most common ways to consume cannabis. Unfortunately, this method is also one of the most harmful. While researchers have yet to confirm that moderate cannabis consumption increases the risk of lung cancer and lung diseases, it's safe to say that smoking certainly is not the healthiest choice in the world. Eh. Come see, come sa. Research has shown that cannabis smoking causes both visible and microscopic damage to the lungs. Fortunately, the evidence suggests that this damage can heal after you stop smoking. However, as long as you continue, the smoke may contribute to lung infection and cause symptoms of inflammation and chronic bronchitis. Switching to a low temperature vaporizer made from high quality materials such as glass, ceramic, medical grade metals, can provide a similar effect to smoking while reducing the risk of inhaling hot embers and carcinogens released by burning plant materials. Changing your consumption method is necessary for anyone hoping to restore the health of their lungs. Edible tincture or edibles and tinctures and capsules are great alternatives. However, there are a few tips and tricks that can help your lungs heal after smoking. So here are six of them. Number one, exercise. Work those lungs. Deep inhalations and deep exhalations are very good for working those lungs and pulling a lot of that out. So like every other part of your body, lungs need exercise. And the US Office of Disease Prevention and Health Promotion recommends at least two and a half hours of moderate exercise each week. Not only does exercise break up chest congestion, but it also boosts immune function and increases blood circulation. Increased blood circulation and heavy breathing increase the amount of oxygen in your system. Well, I could think of some exercises. Moving along. <laughs> The U.S. National Library of Medicine reports that exercise may help flush bacteria from the lungs and airways, and the body temperature increases after exercise, that, and these may prevent bacterial infection. All of those factors promote healing and can help your lungs recover faster after smoking. Here we go, the deep breathing. Number two, deep breathing. Though exercise encourages deep breathing, setting aside at least 10 minutes a day for breathing practice can be extremely beneficial for your lungs. Desk workers who are um, inactive or anyone who spends substantial time sitting may struggle with shallow breathing. Shallow breathing happens when you take small sips of air rather than drinking in a belly expanding breath. So deep breathing works fresh air deep into the lungs, which can help break up buildup, mucus, inflammation. All of these come after prolonged smoking. The American Lung Association explains that without regular breathing exercises, stale air can be trapped in the lungs. This makes less room for fresh healing oxygen and lowers your exercise tolerance. 
Now, see that? Mm, I don't know that it necessarily makes less room for fresh because, you know, if you do occasionally do a deep breath and then exhale until you can't exhale anymore and then try and push it just a little bit more out and then breathe it. I mean, I've done that a time or two and let me tell you, you get a natural high. Okay, I get a buzz. <laughs> But it does, I mean, you your lungs really feel very good when doing that. I usually do something like that when I'm close to my diffuser with my lovely oils going, which tonight I happen to have rosemary and marjoram and white fir and eucalyptus and cypress going in my diffuser. So it smells lovely in here. Um, let's see, where was I at? Oh, deep breathing also cleans out this stale air. Um, and there are different techniques that you can use for doing this. Uh, number three, natural bathing. Hmm. Natural bathing does not necessarily mean taking a bath in nature, though many may find that relaxing. Nature ra uh, bathing refers to spending time soaking up nature. Aha! Aha! Research shows that the Japanese practice of Shinri Yoku, which is forest bathing, is helpful in relieving stress and reducing depression. Additional studies have found forest bathing boosts immune function, which may aid in recovery after smoking. Taking a hike. Oh, so see, if someone tells you, ah, go take a hike, it's not necessarily that they're being mean. Maybe they're wanting, wishing you well. You never know. Apparently, taking a hike through a forest or a stroll through a botanical garden is not only great exercise, but these environments are rich in fresh oxygen. Yes, they are. And when you expel carbon dioxide, the plants go, thank you, thank you, thank you. Now we may breathe because plants breathe in CO2 and breathe out oxygen. Kind of neat how that works, isn't it? Natural areas tend to have better air quality. Yes, they do. And this means that you are likely breathing in less environmental pollutants that can further irritate the lungs and make it more difficult for them to heal after smoking. Excuse me, I had a yawn there because all this deep breathing. Um, number four, a nutrient-dense diet. So if you're eating a nutrient-dense diet, it's important when you're trying to detox from just about anything. Inhaling any kind of smoke deposits car carcinogens directly into the lungs. And these carcinogens are free radicals, which cause damage to cells and DNA. A diet filled with antioxidant foods can aid in neutralizing free radicals. And antioxidants are most abundant in fruits and vegetables. Blueberries, blackberries, green leafy vegetables, and green tea are particularly high in antioxidants. Wild-caught fish like salmon are also a good choice for smoking recovery. I wonder if that holds true if you're eating smoked salmon. <laughs> I love smoked salmon. Salmon is very high in omega-3 fatty acids, which can improve immune function and reduce systemic inflammation. The pink correlation in or coloration in salmon also happens to be caused by one of the most powerful dietary antioxidants, a molecule called astaxan astaxanthin. Okay, whatever that is. It, yeah. Um, in animal research, this compound is known to inhibit breast tumor cells. Cool. Gonna go buy some salmon. Although, you also need to take, ladies, selenium. 200 micrograms a day. Get quality selenium. I got mine from GNC. In any case, that's very good for breast health as well. And thyroid health. Uh, number five, reduce household irritants. You know, the air quality in a home a lot of times is worse than outside. And outside isn't kind of kind 
dicey from time to time, especially if they're playing a lot of tic-tac-toe in the sky. But <clears throat> I have plants in my house, which, you know, there are speci or certain kinds of plants that are very good at scrubbing the air. And then I have my diffuser going, so yeah, air quality in my house is pretty good. Um, in any case, it can be a major contributing factor to lung infection. Research suggests that some household cleaners are harsh enough to trigger asthma attacks, which is why you should do a citrus-based household cleaner. Or use hydrogen peroxide. You know, get food-grade hydrogen peroxide, which you need to keep refrigerated, and uh, blend it according to the instructions and spray that on any kind of mold or something like that. It does kill the mold. You know, it's not, and it's not nearly as abrasive to your lungs as bleach is. Homes that have been exposed to water damage can contain molds and mildews, which contribute to allergy and can further irritate the lungs. Household pets, mites, and dust can also contribute to allergy um, and give, give you symptoms of chronic inflammation. I have pets. I have lots of pets. Reducing household irritants is a great way to improve recovery for just about any health condition, but especially conditions of the lungs. So, also, bringing plants into the home is another way to add more oxygen to your daily surroundings. One house plant per 100 square feet is a good place to start. Um, aha! And number six, yay! Steam and essential oils. Booyah! Bonus round. I'm doing good. Um, so when you first quit smoking, it's not uncommon to experience some chest congestion or residual symptoms of bronchitis as your lungs and airways heal. To help break up mucus and eliminate some of the buildup, a trip to the sauna or a few steamy showers might help. Though steam is more is likely more beneficial for upper respiratory problems than eliminating buildup deep in the lungs. Now, peppermint, eucalyptus, or pine essential oils can also help break up congestion. All three are expectorants, and expectorants are agents that help improve or help remove mucus from the body, especially the lungs and large airways. So to use essential oils, simply mix several drops into a carrier oil, such as coconut or olive oil or almond oil or jojoba oil. And there are some people that have allergies, and so you need to get a little bit farther afield with some of these. Then rub the expectorants on your chest and back. Sleeping with these oils on is a great way to help break up congestion through the night. Also, another good place to put them is to put them on the base of your feet. You know, because the bottom of your feet, I, I know I've said this before, the largest pores in your body and they will it will get absorbed into your system very quickly. So not only breathing them in, but get them absorbed into your system so that they work all the way through the body. That's the way to go. And then, you know, once you get to feeling better, puff, puff, pass. <laughs> Uh-oh. Don't be munching on Tums Poxified Peppermint Oil. Seriously, a drop of peppermint oil will do way more for you than um, any uh, Tums. Tums is not good for you. Yeah, Grimmy, it is hard to keep a salmon lit. And they just don't make the right rolling papers for them either. Um, ah. I saw something from the onion earlier today. No missing spaceships land f land of free. Ah, oh, I am sorry. I'm sorry, Gooberzilla. Darn it all. No missing spaceships. You mean you didn't find that? Hey, you know what? I actually saw something that was an unidentified flying object simply because I could not identify it. It was and I didn't have my camp my phone on me cuz I just I don't carry my phone. Um Especially if I'm going to go for a walkabout at work. 
um it just it stays in my purse you know i mean that i do carry it to work and whatever but um i don't carry it on my person and so i was outside on a walkabout and i looked up and i saw all the tic-tac-toe that was going on in the sky and thought really seriously you guys gotta do this shit and as i was coming back around on the north side of the building i looked up again and i saw this and i mean it it, it looked like I mean, it was just a little white, and yeah, once again, no cell phone, camera, anything like that to zoom in on it. But there was no contrail, no chemtrail, and it would move, and then it would stop, and then it would move, and then it would stop. And I'm sure the people, the business just across the way from us, if there was anybody out there, or the neighbor across the way, if they'd have seen me, because I was standing out there going, whoa that's cool and then i started talking to him <laughs> i thought you know what the hell i mean if they hear you know because mental telepathy kind of thing and uh and of course i wasn't doing mental telepathy i was saying hey there how you doing i see you up there kind of hop skipping and jumping across the sky and you know i'm sitting here watching them and then my vision got diverted by a jet going by or coming up doing the chemtrail boogaloo and when I looked back to where it was there it was gone it's like well some bitch what the hell so I saw an unidentified flying out because I cannot identify what it was but there was no contrail there was no chemtrail and it was very shiny and it was moving in an erratic way so I thought it was kind of cool how I spent my afternoon walkabout. <laughs> uh, okay. You know what? I'm going to have to go and... Because I know I scolded my mother because my mother was taking Tums. And I said, Mom, stop doing that because Tums are not good for you because they say that they're loaded with calcium but it's not the kind of calcium that your your system can absorb from what <clears throat> oh damn it it's telling me it's having an error processing yes <laughs> okay he is so silly frumpy <laughs> Well, we're going to do these just because, you know, it's like, okay, you tell me not to smoke, I'm going to light one up. Or at least a little emoticons are. Okay. Um, why times are bad? There we go. Uh, da, 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 da. We'll check this one out. And if that one isn't one that symptoms of... Nope, nope. Sorry. Live doctor, you're just not tripping my trigger. Um... Well, taking antacids are a bad idea. Yes. Okay, here we go. Boston Functional Nutrition. Throw away Tums, healthy alternatives to antacids. So if you have heartburn or an upset stomach, the answer to these ailments is all too often popping an antacid such as Tums. And why not? They're just over-the-counter meds that might even give you a dose of calcium along with it. In fact, more and more often, I'm seeing the recommendation to take Tums with calcium as a supplement with the added stomach-soothing benefit. Or, for those that have ongoing heartburn, a class of drugs known as proton pump inhibitors, or PPIs, such as Prilosec, bad juju, are recommended for relief. These drugs are meant for short-term use, um, but end up being used long-term. 
and this post is aimed to explain the downside of taking antacids and offer some dietary strategies to provide you with some relief and the big takeaway is get you to the root of your heartburn so yeah because you are basically treating the symptom you're not treating the cause so if you're having a burning sensation or flame that you feel in your stomach, chest, or traveling up your throat, that is heartburn, and it can be caused by a number of different things. Oftentimes, it's experienced after eating spicy foods or drinking coffee or eating fried foods, which fried foods is what usually gets me. It's aggravated by stress and constipation, which means you need to get one of them little, uh, what is that? the the oh that little footstool thingy for the poopy thing with the the unicorn that poops rainbow poop <laughs> moving along um it's aggravated okay aggravated by stress and constipation and often the root problem is food sen sensitivities and or not producing enough acid which is a condition called uh, hypochloridia. Hypochloridia. That almost sounds naughty. The acid in your stomach is called hydrochloric acid and it's critical for digestion and for killing pathogens that make us sick. The production of HLC or hydrochloric acid uh, signals a whole chain of digestive processes. Too little, such as hypochlorhydria, um, and you risk not digesting properly, so you have a feeling extra full or constipated or not fully breaking down the food to get the nutrients, and then you're becoming ill. Specific specifically, HCL enhances the absorption of iron, zinc, copper, folic acid, B vitamins, calcium, and more. So did you see the calcium in there? Yeah, so that calcium that you're getting with the Tums, that is reducing your stomach acid from probably isn't absorbing so well. So here are some signs that make you think you might not be producing enough stomach acid. Um, heartburn or indigestion, brittle hair and fingernails, feeling unusually full even after a small meal belching or bloating after meals, constipation, diarrhea after heavy meals. Mm. So what should you do? Well, before you head for the Tums, try some simple dietary strategies. And definitely get a nutritionist that specializes in food sensitivities, digestive disorders, and things, you know, to do with the GI tract. Because if you keep your gut flora healthy, then you don't have a lot of these issues. But if your gut flora ain't healthy, you're going to have all kind of problems. Reflux and indigestion will return if you don't get to the underlying problem. So... The relief is to eat foods that will provide natural digestive enzymes, such as yogurt, which contains probiotics. And you don't have to buy the yogurt that says, with added probiotics, because you know what? Real yogurt already has probiotics. Also, ginger, peppermint, wheatgrass, aloe vera juice, papaya, pineapple, which pineapple is also good if you have a cough, and apple cider vinegar. Bragg's is the best brand. If you, When you get your apple cider vinegar, make sure it's got the mother on the bottom. It's that scuzzy looking stuff on the bottom that everybody goes, ooh, it's got scuzzy stuff. Yeah, you want that, and you want to shake it up so that that scuzzy stuff gets mixed all throughout it before you pour some out honest put some honey in it makes it a little bit more palatable now you got to pay attention because aloe vera can interact with some medications and should not be taken by most children pregnant or breastfeeding women so make sure you check with if you're going to a doctor check with your doctor first 
and there's a heck of a lot more that you can and should do for long-term relief and to prevent damage to di your digestive system. So, get with a nutritionist and uh, get this stuff ironed out. Because, yeah, just taking Tums isn't necessarily going to help. So, let's see. What else was I going to... There was something about aloe vera that triggered another thing in my brain. And now I can't remember what the hell it was. It just it flew right by and apparently didn't hit any of the cobwebs on the way through. So, damn it. I'll, it'll come to me at like 2 in the morning. <laughs> oh, well. So... Do what? Something ain't right? Something ain't right what? Yes, baking soda in a glass of water. I like to, uh, I actually like to just do soda crackers. Sometimes soda crackers with butter on them, that, a lot of times that's what helps me. Soda crackers with butter. Butter, 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 butter. Um, gosh darn it, I cannot, it, it kind of sort of came up from the nether regions of my brain and then it went, nah, fuck you, I'm not going to talk to you. And I figured you probably did, I be Doncy. Um. Okay, poxified, if that's what's going on. Oh yeah, pickle juice. Yes, pickle juice is very, yeah. I love pickle juice. My youngest daughter and I used to fight over who got to drink the pickle juice and who got to drink the olive juice. Usually she got to because she would sit there and eat a whole damn jar of pickles. Little shit. In any case, uh, poxified, if you're having that much queasiness, definitely some peppermint oil. You know, like a drop. Um, and, um, let's see, peppermint oil and <sighs> soda crackers. I mean, really, that's about the only things that I can think of that cabbage juice, mm -hmm, cabbage juice does work, but man, if you don't like cabbage, <laughs> you are in deep duty, but yeah, I don't, I don't do Tums or any of that stuff. Fortunately, with my doTERRA oils, um, I can buy little peppermint beadlets, which is basically a drop of peppermint oil in a vegetable, teeny tiny little vegetable encased or vegetable fiber, whatever. Um, kind of like a gel cap, only really, really small. And uh, I'll pop one or two of those if I have an upset stomach and within 10, 15 minutes, no worries, everything's kosher. Oh, I know, clove oil is another thing that's, that's, um, good for upset tummies um, just a, a drop I would not do it under the tongue because it would probably burn but you could put it between your lip and your teeth just put a drop there and then kind of swish it around in your mouth because it'll be very good for the dentition the the tissue inside your mouth and for your tummy okay Let's see. I'm thinking that it was Dr. John Bergman that said something about, oh, our tums bad for your liver. Yeah, because see, your liver needs calcium. A lot of people didn't know that either. So, um, but if you get a chance, go to uh, YouTube and type in do um, John Bergman. He is a chiropractor and nutritionist and homeopathic and he's pretty freaking awesome is what he is. And he's got the, the wildest um, Burt Reynolds giggle, but he, he gives a lot of really informative talks. So yeah, if you have any health questions, go check out Dr. John. I like him. 
or Dr. Pappas. Dr. Pappas is an essential oils doctor or chemist. However, let's see. I'm going to go check out my pocket. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Let's see. 15 ways to supercharge your brain. Well, let's check this shit out. This is from lifehack.org. No, I'm not signing up for the newsletter. 15 simple ways to supercharge your brain. Bzz, God, can you imagine my brain supercharged? Holy crap. I would squirrel worse than I already do. So, your brain is the engine that controls every action you perform. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> So needless to say, you should keep it supercharged and ready for action throughout the day. Here are 15 scientifically proven but yet surprisingly simple ways to recharge your brain. Although your brain is not going to be functioning really well if your gut flora ain't healthy. So take care of your digestive system and it will take care of the rest of you putting that out there. Number one, take a daily vitamin B12 supplement. Vitamin B12 doesn't just supercharge your brain, it actually grows the size of your brain. As you age, your brain gets smaller, which vitamin B12 fights. The vitamin has also been proven to help you learn, concentrate, and think critically, and even boost your test scores. Taking a vitamin B complex supplement will ensure that you get the daily recommended dose. Um, also, this is one of the things that just, just ran through and I grabbed it with my butterfly net. Um, if you're taking omega-3s, the supplements, you also need to do CoQ10 because your liver cannot absorb the omega-3s if it doesn't have CoQ10 to help it absorb it. So putting that out there as well. Number two, eat a lighter dinner earlier. Eating an earlier, lighter dinner has a ton of health benefits. Um, like that it helps you lose weight, number one. Yeah, because you don't go to bed on a full tummy and it just kind of sits there and then just goes to, well, it grows on you. <laughs> and it can also supercharge your brain. So eating earlier helps you sleep better because it gives your body more time to digest food properly and prevents food and alcoholic beverages from disrupting your sleep. It also provides your brain with more consistent flow of energy without spiking your blood sugar levels like a huge late dinner can. Number three. Eat more almonds, which I love almonds. I eat almonds just about every day. Um, almonds are referred to as a superfood for a reason. In addition to their innumerable health benefits, almonds and other nuts are good sources of antioxidant vitamin E, which is associated with less cognitive decline as you age. They're also chock full of amino acids and essential oils which help your brain focus. Just be careful about eating too many. There's about 150 calories in 20 almonds, and though they're great for you, do so in small doses, which basically holds true for just about anything. Everything in moderation. If one is good, that doesn't mean a hundred is a hundred times better. That's not always the case. Number four, listen to music. Numerous studies have shown that listening to slow, relaxing music slows down your pulse and heart rate, which if it slows down your pulse, that basically means your heart rate is slowing down, at least in my mind, lowers your blood pressure and actually decreases the level of stress hormones in your body. So listening to music is healthy. It recharges your brain and best of all is a ton of fun. Cool. Number five, meditate. Now this author has done so daily 30 minute meditation rituals for a few years. 
and they can't recommend the practice enough. Meditation is often or is proven to help your mind de-stress and relax. And the practice has even been shown to reduce your blood pressure and levels of stress hormones. I also find that meditation allows me to defragment my thoughts, which heightens my ability to learn and retain information. Uh, maybe I ought to start doing that. <laughs> oh, it's winter time. See, I do my best meditating when it's spring, summer, fall, when I'm out pulling weeds because I just kind of, I'm kind of zone. Number six, drink apple juice. According to one study, apples and apple juice may be among the best foods that baby boomers and senior citizens could add to their diet because it helps your body produce essential types of neurotransmitters that aid your memory and help you retain information. Apples and apple juice have been shown to protect your brain and reduce your risk of Alzheimer's. So that whole apple a day keeps a doctor away has a whole new meaning or another meaning, maybe not a new one, but another one. Oh, here we go. Now for the fun one. Number seven, have more sex. <laughs> sex is a lot of fun, but did you know it can help you supercharge your brain as well? It's been proven to cure headaches. Wait a minute. <laughs> Reduce your stress levels, help you sleep better, increase the blood flow to your brain, well, duh, and increase your brain power in general. Wow. And apparently it doesn't matter which head you're thinking with. <laughs> Number eight, spend time with friends and family. Now, I know some people that probably this would not work well with them. Spending time with your friends and family has far-reaching benefits for your health. Belonging to and investing in a social support network rejuvenates your brain and provides you with more energy and inspiration, increasing your security, self-worth, sense of belonging, and even reducing your stress levels. Unless you go to one of my family reunions and then you do get a lot of the, the uh, hormones from laughing because, oh my Lord, I mean, there's an awful lot of name calling going on and an awful lot of bantering going on, but, and I don't know that it necessarily increases the security levels, definitely does not increase the self-worth levels because, yeah, we can diss on each other pretty good. And sometimes you really don't want to say that I belong to that bunch. <laughs> but I digress. Number nine, go for a massage. Oh, booyah, bonus round. Massages are so beneficial for your body and mind that I'm surprised more people don't take them. Clinical studies show that even a single 1.5 hour session can significantly lower heart rate, cortisol levels, and insulin levels, excuse me, all in which helps de or reduce stress. An hour and a half massage. Good God, I'd sleep through an hour of it. <laughs> Apparently, they also rejuvenate your mind, especially if your health plan covers massages. Going for a massage is a no-brainer. Well, you know what? I don't give a shit if the health plan covers massages. I'm. Yeah, that sounds good. Number 10, read. Reading is a powerful way to provide your mind with an escape. And one study found that reading can reduce your mental stress by an astounding 68%, unless you're reading the newspaper or corporate lame ass propaganda system websites. Or Facebook. <laughs> or sometimes the RLM chat. Your mind is invited into a literary world that is free from the stressors that plague your daily life. Okay, pick up a book. And not a Kindle. A book. There's something very primal about actually turning pages. And even more primal about falling asleep and having that book fall on your nose. <laughs> Number 11. Invest time in a creative hobby. 
When you invest time and attention in a creative hobby, as with reading, you provide your mind with a much needed escape from your day-to-day -day stressors. You jump into a zone that has no pressures, deadlines, or rules, and provide your mind with a chance to recharge. Whether you're into writing or painting or woodworking, investing time in a creative hobby is a fantastic way to supercharge your brain. So see, it's good for my brain when I go to my blanket fort with my crayons. <laughs> Number 12, exercise or play sports. When you exercise, um, consistently it's been shown to be one of the most productive ways to supercharge your brain. It's been proven to make you procrastinate less, focus more, act more disciplined, and even reorganize your brain to be more resilient to stress in the long run. Okay, I'll exercise tomorrow. <laughs> oh wait, there's that procrastinating thing, isn't there? Number 13, expose yourself to more natural light. Okay, guys, this does not mean going out there and just running around naked. Just saying. Too much exposure to artificial light zaps your brain of energy, gives you less control over your attention, and even affects the quality of your sleep, especially if you expose yourself to a lot of artificial light. So expose your body to natural light to supercharge your mind. Even if it's just going and sitting out in a lawn chair and looking at the stars, that is natural light. Number 14, go for a nature walk. Do this stuff barefoot too, by the way, and get yourself grounded. Even when it's cold outside, I mean, you don't want to do that when it's like 20 below or something like that because you get frostbite. But, you know, when it's upper 20s and up, it doesn't hurt you to go outside, especially if there's no snow on the ground. Go outside, walk around on that frozen earth. Yes, your feet get cold, but when you come back in, wow, do you feel warm. <laughs> okay, I do when I do it. It really does, it feels a lot better, at least for me. Number 14, go for a nature walk. So going for a nature walk not only provides your body with exercise, but it also significantly rejuvenates your mind. One study found that even when it's dead cold outside, participants' memory and attention spans improved by 20% when they took a walk through nature. See? It's not just the walk through nature, it's grounding. Grounding is very good for you. Um, to give your mind an even more productive break, I personally recommend leaving your phone and iPod at home when you head out, which I don't, nah, they don't go outside with me. If I'm out working in the yard, my phone's in the house. Heck with it. And finally, number 15, stop multitasking. Oh, I am so guilty of that. Wow. Really? So when you try to take on too many things at one moment, your mind can become overwhelmed and eventually something has to give, which was my sanity. It just went, fuck it, I'm done, which there's F-bomb. I don't know if I've said one before or not, but there, there's definitely one. Multitasking has a huge impact on your productivity, but it can also impact your brain. Multitasking affects your memory because it makes it harder for you to digest and distinguish between what's important and what isn't. It has also been shown to make you more prone to errors and to add stress to your life. So the solution? Stop multitasking. Yes, I get it. I get it. Can I kind of gradually ease off? I can't do that one, cold turkey. Sorry. Oh, Mary B has left. See you. Love you. Bye, Mary B. Oh, your, your phone falls on your face. <laughs> So does that leave a nose print um, on your phone then, poxified when your nose falls on your f face? 
Um, Wow, Goobrazilla, gymnastics in space. Have you ever thought about just exactly what it would take to be able to do gymnastics in a vacuum? I mean, I'm sure you could start spinning around, but if you ain't got a wall to stop you, you're going to spin off into the forever after. Or at least that's what I would think would happen. Hell, I don't know. I don't know. Okay, what's going on over here? Ah, I see that R-A-L-U-M-A-N-U-M-A-N-U-M. Thank you, Grammy. I'm going to put this over here on mines as well. And it just so happens it's on mines. For all you wonderful mines. They go. And put it on the effing site just because it needs to go there as well. Then I think I need to go and check out the pig. I haven't been there yet today, and it is the 20th of December. It is my nephew Zachary's birthday today. Happy birthday to you. Boop, boop. Happy birthday to you. Boop, boop. We'll just do this one and this one. Okay. So, where is... There's the pig. There's the pig. Okay. In their word of the day, fib or fb. FBI, formerly an elite American investigative organization, so they said, it has become the core component of the Clinton crime family. Pretty much, yeah. In their quotable quote section, marriage is a wonderful invention. Then again, so is a bicycle repair kit. This is Billy Connolly. Thank you, Billy Connolly. You are always just so wonderful with some of this stuff. Um, from the AmericanThinker.com, here is proof that Democrat policies fail. Five longtime Democratic empires, all days are consecutive and uninterrupted. Number one, St. Louis, only Democrat mayors, 90% Democratic city council, 15,000 days. Baltimore, only Democrat mayors and only Democrat city council. 18,000 days. Philadelphia. Only Democrat mayors, 90% Democrat city council. 20,000 days. Detroit. Only Democrat mayors, 90% Democrat city council. 22,000 days. And the Great Democrat Beacon on the Hill, Chicago. Only Democrat mayors and 90% Democrat City Council. 30,000 days. The Democrats have ruled Chicago for longer than Stalin ruled USSR. The Castros in Cuba. The Kims in North Korea. And for longer than slavery was legal in the U.S., Wow. Did you know that? The great cover-up is that these are America's top 10 most violent cities, according to FBI data. Violent crimes include homicides, gun violence, gangs, pedophilia, and robberies. Every city is majority Democrat-controlled. Several of these cities on the FBI's list also appear on the murder and non-fatal shooting list. Because the FBI's ranking is per capita, several cities such as Chicago and Newark, only Democrat mayors and 90% city council for 23,000 days, are absent. Ah, so why hasn't any of this information been plastered 24-7 across the front pages of television screens of the DMIC? The Democrat Media Industrial Complex? 
Why haven't President Dengleberry, Secretary Shitlery Clinton, and U.S. Senator Bernie Sanders spent even one minute addressing this? They haven't because they aid and abet the cover-up by the demon crapic party and the DMIC. Of all the Democrat and DMIC cover-ups, the their indisputably failed policies is their most egregious. Trumple Stilskin was the only national GOP candidate who attacked this topic. Undoubtedly, it helped him in his stunning presidential victory. Well, he got the selection. He got the nod. Even though he didn't win cities like Philadelphia, Detroit, St. Louis, he did win their respective states. So... Huh, that does go on for quite a bit, but I will let y'all just go on over to PIGazette.com and you can read all that fun stuff. Um, what is this? Um, from LegalInsurrection.com Columbia, Columbia Professor Trigger Warnings Foster a culture where student fragility is promoted over the development of resilience. Wouldn't this same position apply in all areas of study? Kudo to the professor for standing up. The campus reform reports that prof trigger warnings serious threats to teach English. Huh. So an English professor at Columbia University teaches uh, Teachers College recently argued that trigger warnings can pose serious threats to English education. Adam Wolfsdorf, who teaches graduate classes in, on Shakespeare, just published his concerns on trigger warnings in an article entitled, entitled Reflecting on Functioning in Trigger Happy America. And they're not talking about gun violence. This was in a peer reviewed journal. Changing English. Trigger warnings are posing serious threats to the way that English educators can teach at the university level, he argues. And he taught English for 18 years at the high school level and is now in his fifth year of teaching at Columbia University Teachers College. In a list of six possible consequences of trigger warnings, he argues that they foster a culture where student fragility is promoted over the development of resilience and can encourage students to avoid intense literary moments that they may perceive to be too powerful. <laughs> Trigger warnings could also handicap English teachers by censoring or casting certain literary moments as taboo and critical or cripple artistic freedom by arbitrarily sanctioning what is and what is not appropriate for class discussion and student experience. In an interview with Cansom, can, blah, 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 here we go again. In an interview with Campus Reform, Wolfsdorf said that he was inspired to write on trigger warnings after realizing that academic debate on the issue was void of significant academic research. You think? I'm surprised he was able to even get it published. Okay, so this date in history. The 20th of December, 1946, one of the world's greatest snow job artists, Yuri Spoonbender Geller, was born. And lastly, this date in history, 19, uh, December the 20th, 1950, film classic Jimmy Stewart's Harvey has its gala debut in New York City. I love that movie. I love Harvey. Harvey's, is he six foot or is he six foot two? He's a puka. He's a very tall bunny wabbit. I like Harvey. Okay, what is this? Libtards on the watch. Eee, Phoebes, 
Thebes. See, and you know, when I was in high school, guys used to wear FBI t-shirts, and then underneath it, it said female body inspector. <laughs> it just ain't the same. Huh. Okay. Moving along. Dang. This just kind of flew by. Um, okay. Seeing as how we talked about schools, let's go here, shall we? I saw this over in the RLM earlier today and was able to nab it, or I believe it was in the RLM. It's from koat.com. Maybe it was, maybe it was on Facebook. I don't, I do not remember now. In gender neutrality effort, high school replaces freshmen with first years. Trigger warning, trigger warning. I thought trigger was a horse. Hmm. Apparently, in East Hampton, Massachusetts, oh yeah, it was RLM, because I think J. Dredd shared it. Thanks, Hansel. Incoming ninth graders at a Massachusetts high school will no longer be called freshmen, as they have in the past. Those students at East Hampton High School will instead be called first years, in an effort to make the school more gender neutral. This is according to MassLive.com. For the purpose of class meetings and activities, including the class dues, students will be considered first years, sophomores, juniors, and seniors. Well, I think seniors is an ageist thing. What the hell? Apparently, this is what the school writes in its 2017-2018 school yearbook. You haven't even put the yearbook out yet. What the hell? The website reports members of the school's committee recommended the change uh, to make for a more inclusive environment at the school. Students with the school's Gender Sexuality Alliance helped to craft the handbook's language. Isn't that sweet? Not. I'm thinking it's brain farts are us. Mexico wants it all. Well, you know what? So long as they bring the burritos and the sanchos and the enchiladas and, and the... Well, I got to go to Spain for the Spanish rice, huh? <laughs> I like the food. What the hell? All this, them there, them there brown people, them there illegal people. I think everybody's illegal. Good God, they got over 80,000 pages of regulations that they added, what, what was it, just this year? Everything is illegal. It ain't just brown people. Uh, okay, let's see. Get this shared. Durfs. Total doofuses. Okay. And Grimmy, I think you shared this one, didn't um the uh volcano? I think I think I think. From BGR dot com. There may be a volcano forming under New England, scientists warned. So that's what all that shaking and rattling and rolling with that was going on a couple years back, huh? And here I thought it was Mother Nature just saying, Y'all better straighten your shit up. I can shake you down. <laughs> if you're looking for a volcano, there's a number of places you'd probably check first. You know, like Hawaii or even Yellowstone National Park. But new data suggests that you might want to uh, turn your attention to the northeastern United States. Researchers from Rutgers University have revealed that a large swelling of hot rock is bubbling up under New England. And it may be the first hints that a new volcano is forming under our feet. Oh, ho, ho. do you see a handbasket, people? The findings are incredibly interesting for a number of reasons. 
not least of which because the east coast of the United States isn't exactly a hotbed of potentially dangerous geological activity. Hmm, do you think maybe somebody's playing with things? You know, like harp and electromagnetism and that kind of shit. Them boys playing again. Despite that, the data is undeniable, and it seems as though there is definitely something rising from deep within the earth in that region. I think somebody's pissed, and they're coming to say, How you doing? Gonna give you a little bit of a hot foot. The upwelling that we detected is like a hot air balloon. And we infer that something is rising up through the deeper part of our planet under New England. This is from the lead author, Vadim, Vadim Levin of Rutgers Department of Earth and Planetary Sciences. It is not Yellowstone National Park-like, but it is a distant relative in the sense that something relatively small, no more than a couple hundred miles across, is happening couple hundred miles across relatively small wow y'all y'all have a completely different definition of relatively small than I do just saying the research which was published in the journal geology utilized data from the Earthscope program an Earthscope gathers a wealth of information from thousands of different monitoring devices positioned all over the United States. That's what they're doing. They're monitoring the Earth. It has nothing to do with spying on all of you. Really? Honest. Wink, wink. Fingers crossed. Toes crossed. It's the largest scale seismic measurement system around. Uh-huh. It's, it's measuring the, yeah. And it's providing, or it's proving it ability to provide scientists with incredible insights. Mm -hmm. Earthscope's measurements show that the upwelling is occurring deep beneath parts of Massachusetts, Vermont, and New Hampshire. So if a volcano were to eventually form, there's really no te telling where it would actually emerge. But the process would take a long, long time. Well, you know, there's an awful lot of hot air being belched out in that neck of the woods, at least in the Massachusetts area. I don't know about Vermont and New Hampshire so much, but Massachusetts definitely has its share of hot air providers. The would-be volcano growing under New England would take potentially millions of years to actually form. And because of that, Levin says that there's no reason for current generations to worry about waking up to a neighborhood covered in lava. Well, I don't think you would wake up to a, you know, that's like saying, tomorrow when you wake up, Dad. I don't think, yeah. It will likely take millions of years for the upwelling to get where it's going. So the next step is to try and understand how exactly it's happening. Well, you know, Mother Nature can do whatever she damn well pleases. And the Earth is a very great big ecosystem. And it can pretty much do whatever it pleases. And when it gets tired of our sorry little asses making a mess of things, it will just belch and shudder and shake us off like fleas. Because that's the way Mother Nature rolls. She gets tired of us every once in a while. Deservedly so. Hello. <laughs> Akbar Spoonbender. That is a good one, Frumpy. Um, dun dun dun. Okay, put this over on the F side. Dang, I only got 15 minutes left. Holy smokes, Batman. So, let's see. Oh, I know. Just because this one curse blows. Well, no, maybe. Let's see. Let's see if I can find something else. It's a little... 
I know. Danger, Will Robinson. Danger, danger. <laughs> That's for you, Beetle, in case you ever get a chance to listen in, hun. When was the last time Beetle was around? I saw him last week, but that doesn't necessarily mean that... Um... Da -da -da. Oh. Oh, yeah. I gotta do this one. This is just absolutely asinine. Frickin' Nimrods. It's, um... Uh, from December the 18th. Musician arrested, strip searched, and thrown in jail for... Wait for it. Ha ha! Singing without a license. Yes, I did that to you. I'm sorry. <laughs> In Oklahoma City, Oklahoma, in the land of the free, playing mu music in public can get you arrested and extorted. Only in America. Well, not only in America, but yeah. A street musician has found himself in a legal battle after a judge charged him with soliciting without a license. Stemming from an incident in which he was approached by police, and he responded by asking where he was legally allowed to play his guitar. Don't ever ask. Oh, more pervs? Oh, jeez. U.S. Attorney's Office sending discovery expert to Nevada. Good deal. Good deal. I'm sure Vinny is very busy now. Vinny has been very busy with that, and that's good. It keep well, it doesn't keep him out of trouble, but it keeps him busy. <laughs> Apparently, Ryan Dele Stratter was first hired by the Oklahoma City Arts Council in the early 2000s as a street performer. He said he typically makes up songs on the spot about pedestrians as they walk by. But his red carpet welcome was jerked out from under his feet, even though his act, Rai Dali and Evangeline, has performed all over the state. I would watch as cops would come and arrest people for per performing on the street without a license, even though they had a license to do so, Strader said. After a while, he said he simply stopped buying the license to perform. In his mind, it did not matter to Oklahoma City who had a license, as all street performers were getting caught in the police state's dragnet. Strader decided to see if free speech was dead in America. He said he showed up on the street on November the 15th of 2016 and started singing, and he was approached by four armed police officers who told him that he was, in essence, panhandling, soliciting money from passers-by. Strader attempted to reason with them. I've never sold anything, so I don't know what I could be peddling, he said, but he agreed to leave the Bricktown district where he was first hired to sing. As he was leaving, passing over the freed bridge, Strader said he turned to face the officers once again. And he asked them where he could go to exercise his First Amendment right to sing. When he did, he was immediately resisted for or arrested for obstruction of justice. Wow, that's a real stretch. And received a ticket for soliciting without a license. Obstruction of justice. How is he obstructing justice if he's walking away and he's abiding by their request. I don't get that. Apparently, it was a rude awakening for the artist who said that he was harassed and ultimately arrested for asking questions. As the Free Thought Project has reported on numerous occasions, police will arrest citizens for questioning their orders and will charge them with obstruction of justice. When Strader went uh, to trial on December the 7th, the judge found him guilty and ordered him to pay. Cha-ching, cha-ching, cha-ching. There you go. Now we get down to it. He had to pay fines totaling $240 for the crime of asking the popo where he could sing 
and where he was allowed to exercise his freedom of speech. Obviously, that now has a going rate of $240. Strader described the ordeal as humiliating, and he said that he was stripped of his clothing, placed in an orange jumpsuit, and spent 27 hours in jail, all for singing without a license and getting on a few officers' nerves. When asked if the judge would have mercy on him, Strader told the Free Thought Project that he thought the court was a rubber stamp court, but praised his lawyer for representing him. Oh, sweetheart, no. Anytime you ask someone to represent you, you are admitting that you are a madman. Because nobody can represent you. I feel lucky for that. I have an amazing liar. It's, oh, darling. <sighs> and he's now appealing the judge's verdict. Go for it, dude. They won, Strader said, because I told them that I was leaving and I would not be back. And it's been over a year. No, I'm never going back. I'm out of their city. I'll never go back and perform again. So Stra uh, they asked Strader what he thinks a victory would look like. And... Um, he said, for unconstitutional statutes to be removed from the criminal code and for the cops to stop harassing peaceful citizens who are just sharing some art, he replied. Hmm, that pretty much means that you got to get rid of most, if not all, of the popo. Strader said that several of his friends, who are also artists, have been constantly harassed by police and the consistent manipulation of the law and harassment by police have led several performers to simply stop attempting to entertain. He told TFTP that Megan Armstrong, who works for the OKC Licensing Division, relayed information to him from the city's attorney assuring him the police would not bother him or arrest him if he would put up signs around himself when he is singing which warn people not to engage. Please don't feed the animals. Don't taunt the critters in the cage. You know, you got to put up them invisible walls like Les Nessman had. Strader said that human interaction is what it's all about for him. I never would have done this on my own. I was way too introverted as a person. And that first time out, I met people I never would have met otherwise. Friendships that have lasted to this day because we were playing music live in public. Strader and his wife will continue to play classical piano, guitar, and harmonica to anyone who will invite them. And in 2012, he won the David Wilcox Emerging Artist Award, left his job in the oil field, Booyah, and embarked into the music industry. Together, he and Evangeline have four children and live in Guthrie, Oklahoma. Oklahoma! Yay! Yeah, that's why I say whenever the wind is blowing out of the south, we got an infusion of dumb dirt. Because, man, oh, man, there's an awful lot of dumb ideas come out of that state. Just saying. Uh, but for a nominal fee, you can come here and ply your trade for a nominal fee. See, if they don't get you on the front end, they'll get you on the back end. It's called changing your name to Ben Dover. Oh, well dumbasses. Yeah, there we go. There we go. I'm thinking flip them assholes off. Dumbasses. And that one. There we go. And I will also put this over on mines. Yay, yay, yay. And then, dang, I am just about out of time. So, by the way, y'all been listening to Grammy's Rocket Chair here on RealLibertyMedia.com channel 3 or on the Spreaker channel or on the RLMRadio.xyz site or later on the, um, let's see, later on the YouTube channel, hopefully, unless, you know, I piss off the YouTube gods or whatever, which, hey, <laughs> that is a goal. <laughs> oh, 
hey, Ray and 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 uh, Evangeline were going to be Thursday, October the twelfth in Wichita, Kansas, at the Artichoke Sandwich Bar. Artichoke. So is that one of those sandwiches that you got to choke down? So you got to have an adult beverage to help choke it down. Artichoke. Ack. Oh well. <sighs> Let's see. Let's do that. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, do I have anything else that I want to get to real fast? Because if not, I'm just going to have to say, see you, love you, bye. Because I think I need to fix me something to eat. Ah. You are quite welcome, Cowboy Tech. Oh, here we go. Let's do one more, because, yeah. Um, I actually, actually, I think I had someone tell me that this looked like something that I would do. And I don't remember who shared it on the RLM. Maybe Kate. Uh, it's from RT.com. Mary Triple Xmas. A kinky Irish grandma decorates tree with lavender G-strings. Apparently, a kinky Irish grandma has gone viral after buying racy baubles for her Christmas tree. Aspiring actress Alex Birmingham shared her shock at discovering her grandmother had filled her festive decorations with sparkly lavender G-strings. The county cork woman shared pictures of what she found when she called over to the house, and the post has gone viral gaining tens of thousands of likes and shares on Twitter. Apparently, her 74-year-old grandmother bought Christmas baubles in Dunn's stores, which um, I have just realized upon decorating her tree that unbeknownst to her upon purchase, they are in fact lavender glitter G-strings. So I'm not the only crazy Grammy out there. There are others. Be afraid. Be very afraid. <laughs> uh, oh, I know. It ain't hard to piss off the YouTube gods, Grimmy. I know that. Oh, well. Thanks, y'all, for listening in this evening on this wacka 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 doodle Wednesday. I will be back on Freaker Friday for the Freaker Friday before Christmas Grammy rocket chair. It won't be special. It won't be spectacular. It'll just be a rocket chair. Just like any other rocket chair. In other words, buckle up, darling. It could be a bumpy ride. <laughs> but until then, please remember, I truly do love...